I want you to consider a little kid sitting in one of those inflatable rings and the kid is maybe out in the ocean screaming for help and bobbing up and down. So the kid will make these, um, these rings. Oh, sorry, that does look kind of like, this is the kid's inflatable thing, so it's not a wave. It's the thing the kid is floating in because the kid's gonna be just fine. Everything's okay with the kid, so you can focus on the physics now. The kid's bobbing up and down with a regular frequency, and that's causing these ripplets uh, to go out from him. Because you know that the wave's gonna move out from him in all directions and assuming that he's bobbing up and down equally and that the speed of the wave depends on only, well, properties of the medium, then the wave, all the waves will be spaced equally. Just to find some stuff here. Let's say that these are the crests. If these are the crests of our waves, then we've got a crest here, crest here, crest here, and the distance between two crests, what do you want to call that? Well, let's call it lambda. The wavelength is the distance between two successive crests. And it's moving out with a speed v. And that speed's going to be, what are you going to call it? Wave speed? v equals wave speed. Sure. Meanwhile, if you were watching these wave crests hit you, let's say you were sitting on a pier thinking about whether you want to get your feet wet to save the kid or not, you are sitting here calmly dangling your feet in the water. Sorry about the change in perspective, but you're thinking about it. Maybe you will, maybe you won't. You would see the same frequency, right? You'd see exactly the same frequency as these crests pass by you. Let's draw some more crests so they get up into your face. These guys are passing by you at the same frequency as they are being generated. But if instead, now consider if instead you got into a little boat and you started moving that direction. If you got into a boat and started moving that direction, then you would not see the same frequency. If you were going this way, and I'm gonna call that velocity your velocity, I'm gonna call it you, cause it's your velocity, ha ha ha. You velocity towards, then would frequency go up or down? Frequency up? frequency down. You answer that question yourself. What if instead you got halfway there and realized you weren't gonna make it so you went back to get some more fuel or something, another Snickers, that's what I mean. Then you would have a velocity in the same direction as the wave speed. Then would the frequency go up? Would the frequency go down? Furthermore, what if you were going away from the source of the waves at the same speed as the waves themselves were traveling? Well, we call that surfing. You might be surfing a wave if you're traveling at the same speed, or what if you're going away from it even faster than the waves are going? So you're cutting through the waves and you're seeing waves that already happened in the past. We call that going back in sound time. No one actually calls it that. I just made that up. But I want to go through this in a little bit more detail and instead of a kid bopping up and down, I'm going to have a speaker playing a single note or something like that, and you're going to be listening to it stationarily, or moving towards it, or moving away from it, and we'll get some equations going right here. So if there's a speaker over here, and it's sending out some sound, like that, and the wave is moving at some speed, I guess the speed of the wave is going to be wavelength times frequency, check the units, wavelength is meters, frequency is one over seconds, you multiply those two together, you get meters per second, which is a reasonable unit for speed. So we'll say that that's the case, and that's how fast the wave is actually moving through the air. And then we'll say that this is our listener, and it could be a microphone listener is doing things like, well, the listener could be going this way or this way or just staying still. But anyway, the listener, I, I could even draw the listener as some kind of glorified microphone who's going to be able to um, hear what's going on over here. So if the microphone is moving towards it, the pitch might actually change. If the microphone is moving away from it, then the pitch might actually change. But let's do the simplest case. And I'm gonna say here that the simplest case is if you, the microphone, that's you, is moving towards the source of the sound. So V is that direction and U is that direction. And we can define an apparent frequency. Our apparent frequency will be F prime. And I'm going to label this as apparent frequency. 
or we could call it the frequency as seen by the listener, the, the observed frequency. And that's gonna be the apparent speed of the wave, the apparent speed of the wave, divided by lambda. Does that make sense? Why should it be that? Well, we take this equation right here, and we solve it for f. Now the wavelength is going to be measured the same by everybody. Everybody could take a moment in time and measure that this distance right here is lambda. So there's no such thing as a lambda prime in this case. Lambda is lambda is lambda. But you know that the apparent velocity of this wave is not gonna be v, because you're moving towards it with a speed u. So the apparent velocity is going to be v plus u. Ah, now I'm talking about these guys as scalars. It's how fast the sound is going, plus how fast the listener is moving. That would be the apparent speed of these waves. And then we're gonna divide that by the same lambda. Mm-hmm. So, you know that, oh man, you know what lambda is, right? So I'm gonna take this, I'm gonna take this lambda right here. Let's solve this for lambda. Lambda is V divided by F, and I'm gonna plug this in up here. Watch this. I get V plus U divided by, oh man, V over F. So now I'm getting the apparent frequency in terms of the original frequency, and this is the denominator of the denominator, so it comes out in the top, and this is V plus U divided by V, and that simplifies a tiny bit. I'm gonna get one plus U over V times the frequency. <gasps> Interesting. Check this out. This says that the apparent frequency is larger than the actual emitted frequency. I'm going to label that. Uh, we've got apparent frequency labeled right here, and I need to label this one as emitted frequency. That is the emitted frequency right there. Now I want you to consider, maybe we could even broaden this. What if I said that we could be going this way also? If I'm going this way, then our U is the opposite direction. And I can come back in here with a red marker and I can show you what happens if we're going the other direction. If we're going the other direction, the same argument follows except the apparent speed, the apparent speed is lowered by you because you're going this direction to get away from it. So assuming that we're not going as fast as the wave, where stuff gets really crazy, assuming we're not going as fast as the wave, we can find that we'll simply subtract you instead of adding it. So I'll subtract you instead of adding it, I'll subtract you instead of adding it, and then I'll subtract right here. So let's look at that possible equation right there. That's a little bit, a little bit trickier. If moving away from stationary source. Oh man, that implies, that implies that I source could be moving in the future. Yep, that's what's gonna happen in the next video. If moving away from a stationary source, then I've got frequency prime is one minus U over V times the frequency that's actually being emitted. So what if, what if u equals v? What if we're actually moving at the wave speed? What's the apparent frequency? Try this out. We've got one minus u over v, but u is v, so we've got one minus one times the frequency. <gasps> there's no, there's no f prime. There's just no frequency, which means nothing's changing. Yeah, cause you're surfing. Cool, like the Beach Boys, done. Let us consider what happens if the source itself is moving towards or away from you. 